So we're just going to start work on these valves. Uh, as you can see on the left, that's all cleaned up. And on the right, not so cleaned up. So, get to cleaning those, I think. Indeed. That's all the, uh, the valves cleaned up. There's a bit of oil on them still, but from being cleaned. But uh, all the cokes taken off them, they've all been sort of polished up as best they could. Actually, the exhausts are incredibly clean, the inlets with the gunky bits, with the EGR recirculation going on. Um, yeah, all clean and ready to go. So next thing is to uh, get the head ready to start lapping these valves back in. All 16 valves. Oh yeah. That's going to be fun. So having a right mare on the head, um, getting the valve stem seals out, which look a bit like this. So we've been using the proper tool, which is one of these, and then we cut some grooves in it to make it better. I then found that for the inlets, using a set of tiny little more grips, just turning very slowly, popping them off. But on the exhaust side, or I should say, sorry, the exhaust side is easy, the inlet side, uh, there's tighter webbing, so you can't get anything down there. So, thought I'd mention this for the usefulness of anyone else doing this, because apparently it's a right mare, it's not just me. I've got some pliers I didn't really like very much, mainly because they're pink. Um, and I cut some grooves in it, as you can see. Um, I also cut a bit of a grind in them, so there's a flatter edge to grip onto, but the grooves I think are most significant. And then, um, see if I can show you, put you down and show you what I've been doing to make it work. Right, so, hopefully you can see this, what I'm doing here Just getting the pliers into a position where they're on a groove. Big set of vice grips on the pliers. Because the problem I was having, I was getting my fingers trapped when the pliers slipped off. And the first thing you've got to do is make sure it's rotated to kind of break the seal. And then check that the pliers are still in place, which they are. Twist and pull gently. Don't get your fingers in there because if it pops, you're going to hurt yourself. There you go. So that's my fangled tool to remove valve stem seals. There we go. Hopefully, you saw that. Just 16 more to do. So, on the end, uh, on the 16 valve heads, uh, is where the shaft goes through, which you can kind of see through the four. Look. That's where these flaps go in. Well, we're not using them. So uh, what I'm going to be doing, and I've already kind of done and started to do, is I've put drilled this out to I think it was just under nine mil, and then tapped an M10 thread in the M10 by 1.5. I've then cut down a bolt of the right size of exactly what I need, uh, the right length, and the head was a bit big, so wants to fit in there so it's a flush finish and then I'm going to jam a load of sealant and uh, thread lock in there and I've got a little rubber seal on the end of it as well so once that's in there that'll seal it off nicely and that's the result so not the prettiest thing but it does the job and it'll seal that hole off and obviously then the uh, the inlet manifold goes over the top with the inlet gasket well it's not a gasket it's like a surface to surface gasket with that stuff we'll seal that them off there, uh, and it doesn't really matter. I'm not that actually that bothered. Um, was considering welding these in individually, but we're not going to bother. Others haven't done so, and they've got on fine. So that's that little job done. The flanges have also all, all been cleaned. I don't know if you can see that exhaust side and that side, and we've now got the uh, all the seals out. So the next thing to do is to just redo the. Uh... Oh, I'm tired. Valve seats. Um, and a little trick someone's told me about is to use a bit of fuel hose and we'll jump it on the end of the valve and then we can jump it on the end of the drill because that's what I'd normally do is use a drill um, but as you can see you can't get one down there so that's what we're going to try in a second maybe have some dinner first we just left off having plugged the end there we've got all the valve stem seals out so we're now working with the grinding paste to do our valve seats um, not really much to see here um, hello Ziggy! What's up? 
Um, she found the golf ball again. Um, not much to see here. Um, i do a quick time lapse in a second. Um, uh, I'll put a link up here for the XUD11 build, which I talk about doing the uh, valve seats. As you can see, that one I'm still working on. Uh, those are done. Those aren't done. The exhaust side is particularly bad. Uh, let me pop one out just to show you if anyone is interested. If you can see that, they are quite bad compared to the opposite side. Um, inlet, which aren't all that bad to be honest. And just take a quick grind. Um, so by hand, the exhaust are actually so tiny that I can't get my sucker on it anyway. But someone suggested, because of the amount of time this takes, doing a little clever job with a drill and a bit of pipe. Um, so let me set that up. On, put the camera on a stand, I think, and I'll show you. Let's get our exhaust valve. <coughs> okay, so we obviously want to, as quickly and as efficiently as possible, um, run this valve. Um, seat against the seat in the head and we've got our fine and our course here and we're going to have to use the course because these valve seats are rather ridiculously bad certainly not the worst I've seen but not great and we, um, we're using a little bit of engine oil just because of the method I'm about to use so let's get this working Okay, just putting a little bit on the valve stem itself, um, just so we don't damage anything. Right, anyway, all over myself now. Okay, so that's in there, and then hopefully we can be able to see this on the camera. I get a drill, we've got a bit of fuel pipe, just the right size. and you just slide it on the end of the valve. Right, let's move the head round again so you can see it. Hang on, we've hit the wrong valve, that's not good. What a muppet. Anyway. Let's get it on the right one, James. Ah, uh, right, there we go, now it's on the correct one. And then, Just give it a spin. There we go. And then I'll have to do that a few times, clean off the valve, um, put a bit of fresh uh, paste in it, and slowly that valve seat will come back. Um, we'll just start seeing it and then eventually they look a little bit more like that. I don't know if you can uh, see that really, but hopefully it might focus for a second before I will lose the will to live. There we go, it looks more like that as opposed to the one I saw you showed you earlier. So we're going to carry on now. Um, I've done the inlets and exhaust on that cylinder, exhaust on that cylinder, I'll do the inlets there and I'll just probably work my way along there. This is very boring. Bores me to death this and I've been putting it off for ages so let's get on with it. <sighs> So there we have it, um, all the valves are done, I only showed you the few here because well, it's boring isn't it, so all the inlets are done, 
all done. So we're just going to have to send that off then to get skimmed and tested, and we're ready to go. Boom! That's a huge victory, even though it's 16 tiny little ones. <clears throat> Got to do the battles to win the war. No head, because that's off being skimmed. Um, block is as far as the block can go till we put our head on it. Um, so what I'd like to do now is go through these bits here, choose an alternator, choose a pump bracket, choose bits and bobs. I've only got one starter, so I'm stuck with that one. As delicious as that starter looks, that's all we've got, so we'll be using it. Um, and I think um, pick of the best, clean them up. If it's possible, put new bearings in what's necessary. I'm going to have to make the best I can here, because budget's all been spent on rods, so uh, at least I'll have spares, but I need to pick the best, clean them up, give them a lick of paint, and they'll be ready for block. Um, and then I've got a box full of bits like the inlet manifold, which is kind of the, um, the carrier for the cams as well, the cams to clean up, bits and bobs like that. So a lot of cleaning to do, so when the head's back this weekend, um, I can put it all back together, I hope. I'm all excited, I had all the parts cleaned up, they're all clean, ready in little tubs, ready to go. And I got all excited, I thought, well, once the head's back tomorrow, I can get building. And then I remembered the inlet, which is also kind of top of the head and top carrier for the cams, bearings. It's kind of all in one. Nice little design. But before I clean it, I thought I'd show you the result of EGR recirculation. So, oh, when I'm dead. Let's have a look what we've got in here. There we go. Lovely, eh? And it's all from that little port there. Where it circulates. Now, I know it's meant to be for environmental issues and all that, but look at that. That does not help the efficiency of a vehicle. And that's why I won't be recycling exhaust gases, even though it helps warm up another couple of things. No, we won't be doing that. So better clean that up. I uh, couldn't bring myself to attack this with a pressure washer just because they were in a right mess of the drive uh, and the pressure washer. So I don't know if you can see that. That's kind of 30, 40 blobs of me kind of getting my finger in there and scraping out. And you can probably see in there the scrape marks. And there's two kind of sections in the manifold that disappear off either side. Uh, I don't suppose you can see much in there, just about see them. Uh, and they were completely entirely blocked. Unbelievable. And um, for some reason that the outer ones were more blocked than the middle ones. I don't know what that there's probably a good reason for that, so it was temperature change, etc. I don't know. Horrific, really was. So um I'm gonna fill this with petrol, kind of leave it at this level, fill it with petrol to the brim to soak in a little bit, and hopefully uh, clean it off another day. Um once that's soaked in. What a mess. <laughs>